fellas, do you remember GameStop? That's right, GameStop. If you don't remember, back in 2021, its stock price soared. It went absolutely absurd. It went crazy. And your good friend Coney bought in at the perfect time, right when it was at its biggest. <laughs> I think I bought in at $365. Here's my current return on investment. Yeah, I'm down $425. I I got tricked. I thought we were all I thought we were diamond hands. Gorilla's together strong. I thought we were in this together. <laughs> I still have this, and I would like to know when I can get my money back. And that's why I have a video about the economics of GameStop. What happened to GameStop? Let's find out together. This video will not make you rich. Uh, you won't know unless you watch it. Gamers would line up at midnight in the cold and the rain to get their hands on the latest AAA title. Do people still do this? Do they still do uh, midnight releases? I feel like it's not a thing anymore. I did for Tears of the Kingdom and it was really sad. Damn, dude. I guess everybody buys digital now, or they're going to. Deep losses and a timeless example of the institutional <laughs> market manipulation between hedge funds and stockbrokers. Fuck! And to a faithful few, GameStop is the super stonk. And hodling Son of a bitch! I'm, I'm the faithful few. It's gonna come back! Investors. It'll come back! Tech We're in the moonshot era, relevancy. baby! Diving headfirst into Oh, wait, NFTs. Uh-oh. Every trend. <laughs> I didn't Web see that three, part. Blockchain and uh -oh. NFTs. <laughs> when it came to buying video games back then, Best Buy, Circuit City, Walmart were all options but their inventory for video games was usually tiny or limited to one aisle. You guys ever go to Best Buy and you're like, hey, let me check out some of these video games. And then like they have a game that can't, they have like Skyrim for $50. And carry not only the newest titles the and gamers consoles, are in but control. also offer Finally, the largest collection of used games. A store games. for the gamers, bring them in. GameStop had scaled to over 4,400 locations nationwide. There's two near Overseas, me. Overseas, the company they shut boasted equal omnipresence. That's how I knew it was almost over. Way too many. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so there were two near me, but the mall near me, Arundel Mills Mall, there were two GameStops at the Arundel Mills, too. I don't know why. It's in the same mall. Having 3,500 stores nationwide. What the fuck is Best Buy doing? Oh, lazy at? There's only 750 Best Buys in the country? Upon finishing a game, you could keep it on your shelf, or you could recoup some cost ah, by selling it to someone else. For $3. Yup. Yup. Bring that shit back to GameStop. We'll give you program, six bucks. Offering customers 3 to $5 in store credit or cash for a game, and then selling that exact same disc and box a day later on the same shelf for $15 to $30. I cannot believe they got away with that for so long. That is insane. Trade five, get one free. It is unfathomable that they got away with that and people were just like, yeah, bro, that's great. I want to play the new GTA. You could list on eBay or Craigslist, but you would have the overhead of coordination, shipment, and- God damn, who's paying 10K for the PS3? PS3 got no games. <laughs> We all knew that. Whenever a new generation of consoles come out, early adopters will always rush in to get the latest and greatest despite limited launch lineups and with the understanding that it will take time for studios to develop titles that will properly utilize the new hardware. Or it just doesn't. That that feels like that's the current gen. For a while, this was it. It was like, hey, give it a couple years. And now PS5, I got six games. Make some money selling to hardcore games. Oh, they're in the Xbox dimension. God damn, green everything. Gamers who wanted Different the latest floor for and every greatest. Console. When these hardcore gamers migrated to newer consoles, God, GameStop would recollect. Re <laughs> Bro, she said. When these hardcore gamers migrated. She offered her the game warranty. Would you like to pay $3 for the, to protect your game? To newer consoles. No. <laughs> Stop. I will not. <laughs> In the mid-2000s, GameStop sold new titles at an average retail price of $41. God damn. Yeah, if I was Sony, I would cut this shit out too. Look at all the money GameStop is making off of my shit. But how do you pivot out if you're GameStop? How do you find a new market? You don't. Well, that's, a, that's kind of the thing. You just die. While GameStop laughed its way to the bank, having sold a pre-owned game for $18 yeah. and then bought off someone else for $5. Honestly, I don't care. As long as you have the set. Damn, I could get Pac-Man and Pac-Man World 2. Please take my money, GameStop. I always felt bad for the kids, though, buy this shit, though. Without the box art. <laughs> 
He was getting that shit without the box art. And if you ever went to a kid's house and they had that, I felt so sad. No, that was Burnout 2. Burnout 2 sucks. Burnout 1 is, is great. Burnout 2 sucks. Burnout 3 is one of the best games ever made. Is that the one with Girlfriend by Avril Lavigne or is that Paradise City? You turn on the game and hey, hey, you, you. I'm fucking... I rented it from GameStop, uh, from, from Blockbuster, and that shit blew my ears out. That was paradise? <laughs> this is why scale was so critical to GameStop's <laughs> business model, beyond the usual more stores, more customers. It's weird that Having rabbits are so ingrained location in just about every major strip mall now? or shopping mall meant that it could accumulate and flip as many pre-owned video they games still feel new from and to as many players as possible. That Kratos looks normal as hell. Like, he, he looks like a particularly built dad? The God of War? Guy of War? <laughs> GameStop was able to find and fit into established commercial areas cost efficiently around the world. Oh, they got the gamer truck. <laughs> okay. Be honest, guys. I I I have a I, I I have an invasive thought every time I see one of these, intrusive thought, and it has Mario on it. Cause sometimes when I see that, I'm like, I'm gonna call Nintendo. You shouldn't get away with that. Maryland has a couple of these. Gamer truck Mario. It's it's just like a truck with like Mario and it's like a birthday party thing. And I'm like, I know Nintendo didn't give you permission to get that Mario and that Yoshi. I'm calling them up. Reggie? Oh, I forgot they made a magazine, dude? GameStop was the company behind Game Informer, this shit went crazy. a subscription magazine that captured the latest launches and industry developments every month. You know, I never really thought about it. They should have rated every game a 10. Why did they rate things bad? Why They could have just been like, yeah, this is a great game. Buy it now. This period from the mid-2000s oh, kind of to early time. 2010s is what some would consider to be the golden age of gaming, yeah! where video games made great <laughs> leaps in... I know that you guys have heard this a million times, right? And and I'm not trying to be a, a fucking boomer, because I know this is a very boomer thing to say. But the jump from 2D to 3D was unlike anything you'll ever see again. Seriously, it was fucking crazy. And now, with every generation, it's just like the lighting is better... Maybe there's rain on the visor, right? You know, I don't know. It's not the same. Maybe VR being good. That might be the closest, yeah. Once we nail VR down, but it's been years and years, and we still, like, the best thing you could play on it is still, like, Hand Simulator or Surgeon Simulator. Whoa, it's so funny because it doesn't work. I think it's fucked up that VR's best games are about how shitty VR is and Beat Saber. Consoles were positioned as home entertainment devices Ooh, for the hit entire it. family. Ooh. And publishers were that is too many people consoles were positioned playing as just home dance. Entertainment Look at all these people the waiting their turn. Is this a line? <laughs> Stop hogging the setup, Nadine. I want to play Just Dance. From Gears of War and Twilight More Princess like in 2006, Halo 3, Call that of Duty 4, and Wii Sports in 2007, Super Smash Bros. Brawl Yo! in 2008, Modern Warfare Nico, 2 and my Uncharted cousin. 2 in 2000. I'm just trying to think of something for all these games. 2009. Nico, Halo Reach, my Starcraft 2, and Black Ops in 2010, <laughs> Skyrim, and Dead Space 2 in 2011 are just some of the notable <laughs> AAA titles in that six-year span. By 2012, the average GameStop store was grossing $1.44 million dollars a year. That's the average store? New consoles, new video games, and pre-owned consoles. I'd be so fucking mad. Shoot him. This guy, why would you ever do that to a guy with so much weaponry? He has so many shotgun shells and tear gas. Kill that, man. The pressure was on the studio. Did anybody else have the Wii Animal Crossing? That shit felt magical. I could go to my wife's village. We didn't live together at the time. We were just boyfriend and girlfriend. I went to her fucking village and I talked to her through the Wii remote microphone. <laughs> As if we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> Did you hear about Bin Laden's Animal Crossing Wild World save that is in the hands of the U.S. government? I did hear that Bin Laden liked Final Fantasy VII. I did not hear about his Animal Crossing village. I would like to visit it. I want to know who's in Osama Bin Laden's animal village. Who was his favorite villager? Yeah. So GameStop was just the retailer, the final middleman between the publisher and the player. Used video games and consoles were the Damn. second largest business this segment is gonna for GameStop. This going to sound stupid, but I never really thought of it like that. Gross profit for new console sales was in the low single digits of 6% from 2004 Damn, to 2012. Really? Predictably, GameStop's greatest profits came from the sale of pre-owned video games and consoles, where the retailer Damn. enjoyed 47% gross margins every year. How the fuck do you pivot, dude? God, what an awful spot to be in. How do you get out of this? Business, 
All of your money is off the backs of other people. What the fuck? You have all this money. How do you pivot out? Range. Oh, no. The industry would evolve once more, but this time it would no longer favor the retailers like GameStop. The second was the absorption of the casual handheld game market by the iPhone and the Apple App Store. Which oh, I didn't even think of that. Bro, they lost their DS sales? Publishers to deplatform GameStop. Fuck, how do you sell apps at GameStop? And the third was the change in the form of video games from predominantly single-player oh, titles to they multiplayer got first beat titles. the shit out, man. Since the late 2000s, publishers and fanboys alike had been uh. locked in a bitter, high-profile, and largely pointless war over whose console was the best. This is literally true still, by the way. <laughs> well, that's not true. PS3 went crazy, but now it's PS5. Realize that pressing play... <laughs> Pro, get up. Just stand up on these little play stools. What the fuck are you doing? You look like you're in a daycare. Stand... Get up. Get up. <laughs> the after school daycare yeah i'm saying like i don't know this seems so dehumanizing to me i don't know why something about these seats nintendo sony and microsoft all began pushing gamers to not only access dlc Dude. post launch but i used to think this marketplace was like so futuristic oh my god this is hideous so to buy and DVD download entire games over the oh my god dude jesus fucking christ <laughs> More content was made available on the Xbox Live, Ugh. PlayStation Network, and Nintendo Network. PlayStation kind of And more timeless, consumers though. jumped on to acquire look, games digitally. It doesn't look bad. Oh, that's my birthday. Big ups. Everybody say happy birthday. Drop a prime in the chat. <laughs> Direct digital distribution also empowered publishers to embed DRM so that each digital copy of a video game DRM. could only be consumed yeah. by the exact buyer. Ever, do you remember that weird time? I think there was like a download code in boxes for online play. That's what it was, exactly, yeah. So you would get, like, I had Twisted Metal for the PS3, and it came with a code for online play, and I couldn't play online unless I entered that code specifically because they didn't want you to rebuy Twisted Metal and then be able to play online. So if you bought Twisted Metal used, you couldn't do that. I forgot about online passes, yeah. The company attempted to fill in the few cracks where the publisher virtual storefronts had not reached. They sold physical prepaid Xbox Live and yeah. PSN cards alongside codes for DLC for customers. Or for AutoZone. Or Southwest Airlines. Gamers love that. Quote, we believe we are the only significant <laughs> brick-and-mortar retail seller of DLC and that we are frequently the leading seller of DLC for most game titles. Is there a market here? Brick-and-mortar retail seller of DLC. Who the fuck wants that? That's got to be you just don't have online. You have a satellite connection. You got to drive into town 30 miles to get a new horse in Skyrim. It has to be that. The company opted for rapid diversification through M&A. The M &A issue what? here is not so much the amount of money burnt on M&A, but M &A more so what? what that money was spent on. Mergers and acquisitions? Is that what that means, right? Any business heads? In 2010, GameStop bought out Congregate. <laughs> the Flash games? You bought Congregate? What are you doing? What are you to buy Newgrounds? A portal for free-to-play browser games. Gibbets 3. Gibbets is back. Oh, damn. They got Gibbets, bro? Put me on Congregate. I'm trying to play Gibbets. They were just young adults that wanted to kill time at work. Yeah, I don't know In why you would buy Congregate. In an attempt to monetize Congregate. a user base a weird... that had more time than money, Congregate rolled out its own virtual currency, but it predictably never caught on, even yeah. in my many years on the site. I saw a post today about uh, how it felt like a lot of like these online companies and businesses, they, they were focused on building a base, right? You build the, the audience and you get a lot of people on and then you figure out how to monetize them later and then you never figure out how to do it and that's what's happening with uh, Reddit right now because Reddit has no idea how to make money. How can you effectively monetize a site with free API with Reddit gold and awards? I don't know. Nobody's figured it out. That's kind of the whole, like, if one guy figured it out, it, it is crazy to me that nobody figured it out, right? Because if one guy did it, all of these sites would be fine. They'd be saved. Two months before the acquisition, Steve Jobs penned an open letter announcing that Flash would not be supported on iOS Oh, due to security and performance issues. Steve, man! Steve fucked it up for GameStop. Why is everybody trying to kill GameStop, dude? We just bought Congregate. GameStop still pressed forward with its multi-million dollar acquisition of a desktop flash game portal. Damn, just they still one year it? after GameStop's acquisition of homies. Congregate, Adobe announced that Flash would be placed on maintenance with no further investment, killed Flash on Android, 
and told all developers, including the ones who are making Flash games for Congregate, to switch to HTML5. Ew. Bro, honestly, I didn't think that they were actually going to get rid of Flash, so I would have been GameStop too. You won't. Little bitch, you're not getting rid of Flash. How are you going to animate funny things like slapping Paris Hilton, beating up Hannah Montana, <laughs> all the classics of Newgrounds.com? What will poor Ego Raptor do? Clueless. Actual clueless. He's finished. <laughs> what a what a fantastic pivot for him. Straight up. He saw the door closing and he was like Indiana Jones. He fucking slid under and he grabbed his hat at the very end. He got out, bro. The purse strings were loosened once again with a $140 million purchase of ThinkGeek. A Fuck yeah, we're buying merchandise. Get the merchandise. Get a nice creeper backpack for your for your nephew. He likes that blocky Minecraft game. We have transformed from the world's largest retailer of physical video game uh, products into a family of retail brands selling you? many of the world's most popular technologies and pop culture uh, products. I'm our goal is to have 50% or more of our operating earnings come from sources other than games. 50% or more? Ooh, I could buy Funko Pops online. Stop cringing, bro. You bought. I thought we were all buying. I thought we were holding. I did it because you guys did it. I bought in because I thought we were all doing this together. You guys left me. Dude. GameStop's overall revenue in the mid-2010s never reached the same heights as it had in the era of dominance. You know, I, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I don't think I've ever said this on stream. It was my dream. I have really wanted to be one of the guys hosting those like GameStop TV things. Like when you walk into GameStop and they have the TVs. I was like, damn, that looks like a fun job. You get to talk about video games, and you get to, like, show them to people, and, like, here are the hottest new games. Like, that that would have been my job. And now I get to make fun of GameStop talking about video games here. <laughs> Coney, I think we're hiring. I'll send my manager your stream link. GameStop's what, do you work game at business. GameStop production? -wise, hey, I'll do one. The company's overall Hit margins. me up. I'll the go in the little GameStop, GameStop TV. Thought were safe, positive growth. Hey, anybody out there? <laughs> Knock on the screen. Is anybody shopping here right now? This place looks empty as shit. GME drops to zero. Every time I go into that fucking GameStop, there's a guy in the TV harassing me. Hey, leave! Get out of here! I've hidden a bomb in the store! If you don't leave, I'm gonna, huh? Have a little detonator in my hand. Huh? <laughs> Why don't you get them off the TV? We can't turn it off! We unplugged it! He won't stop yelling! Because of just how much it took to capture the next sale. I just brazenly take bribes and just tell people to buy whatever I get told to pit. Oh, that would be fantastic. It's time to install Honkai Star Rail. GameStop's fifth CEO in just two years. The Damn, diversification nobody could figure it out. Look at all these smart fellas. Nobody could do it. GameStop would now enter Return its third and present day era of Web3. Yeah! Retail investor cult to the hero, moon! Brian We're all going to make it. Peak detective. Consumer sales. These days, it's no longer just the big publishers of. <laughs> you remember when you killed somebody in Nickelodeon and the guy would go, Whoa! <laughs> GameStop's whoa. revenue, now exclusively <laughs> reliant on just its video whoa? game business, has dropped from $8 to $9 billion to just $5 to $6 billion <laughs> a year. The average GameStop store in 2022 that game was makes so far funny. less than that game doesn't feel like it was real, right? It feels like a collective, like collective hysteria. Ryan Cohen has made no secret and of his intent to reinvent GameStop as an asset light tech startup with software margin. Oh, of hell his no. intent my, to reinvent GameStop. My company got the definition of a word on the wall. I'm losing my job. If your if your place of employment got a definition on the wall, you're done. Like how much money is generated by its NFT marketplace? When that same revenue Wait. is intentionally blended with sales from toys and trading cards. They have an NFT marketplace? I didn't know that. Or oh, they're just fucking that dead. NFTs dead, are just JPEGs for the rich and gullible or digital assets they're of the future. Dead, dead. GameStop what can't the hide fuck? that its blockchain marketplace is its last big bet. Yeah, they're dead. Like Reddit's vaults, NBA Top Shop, NFL All Day, Magic Eden, and Rarible. That's a lot Exchanges more than I knew about. initially differentiated themselves That's like six on the more quality than I knew about. and the perceived the prestige of the artists, oh, creators, that and cool collections cat. Only that they attract, dollars. like buy Doodles, that shit right now. What Board a steal. 8 Yacht Club, CryptoPunk, and Azuki. Is this shit, like, dead dead? It's, it's dead? fees okay. to zero, 
cutting royalty what fees, happened? and building intangible <laughs> economic about incentives for platform or collective loyalty. hysteria. What the fuck was that all about? But the greatest mistake that many people make these days is not understanding that soft. Actually, unironically, I have money in Coinbase too. <laughs> We're coming back soon, everybody. Don't worry. We're coming back. And I still have some AMC lying around. Product, you tried to be so cool with the fucking AMC. Just take the GameStop and we all make money. Why the fuck would you buy AMC, you fucking moron? If you just take GameStop, we all win. Why do you have to be different? Oh, I'm going to go with this other stock. <laughs> Pissed me off. I like movies. Get the fuck out of my chat. <laughs> I like, I'm, I'm going to spare you. Actually, I've banned too many people tonight. Anyway, I learned a lot. What do you think about GameStop? Boy, they sure are losing money. <laughs> oh man. GameStop is poor now. 